I'm, I'm James Kyle. Uh, I work on a number of open source projects, Babel, Yarn, Flow, and a bunch of other things. Uh, I'm also on TC39. Uh, and yeah, lots of JavaScript things. Cool, and I heard you just open sourced a project. I did, uh, React Loadable. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about uh, code splitting lately and how to make React apps faster around that. Um, we have this new standard uh, dynamic imports that are built around promises, so I wrote a very small 100 line or so library that just allows people to to find splitting points within their libraries that they can use with Webpack to very easily just break their code apart at the component level. This is actually something that makes it even faster than the TC39 import proposal. It makes it easier in a React application to break those things, like where you, a component tree apart so that there's an asynchronous portion that you can import. Uh, and use a loading view and handle errors and it supports server-side rendering and a bunch of other things. I'm going to keep building some stuff around it within, uh, I have this idea around a server that you can build on top of Webpack that can help deliver bundles in a more efficient way so that you have this nice code splitting but on the client you get uh, very fast renders um, and we're already sending down bundles that we'll know you'll need uh, before you've requested them. So a lot of experimentation around there. Looking forward to harass uh, Sean Larkin to get him to bend to my will on Webpack. <laughs> so I know you've been super involved with the JS community, doing a lot of things like Yarn, React, Flow, Babel, et cetera. What are some of the more exciting things that are happening in the React community? Yeah, uh, the React community is really cool in that uh, there's tons of experimentation and. and it really has that uh, just, just sort of hack your way through problems until you have good solutions and uh, a lot of sort of commodity around that. There's, there's some cool things in the ecosystem right now. Uh, obviously, uh, React Fiber is sort of this big thing everyone kind of doesn't really understand what's excited about, which is like, I don't know what it is, but I'm just ready to go. Uh, but uh, I've been interacting with the React team a lot about that, and there's actually some cool things that will enable in the future that people might not see right away. And uh, sort of trying to balance what's happening in React internals with what we're doing in the community today and what we're, we can do in the future to make better applications and make it easier for people to use. Uh, so it's a lot of this coordination between a lot of different tooling. Um, and it's, it's fun to be a part of, so. Yeah. What are you most passionate about in the JavaScript community? <laughs> Uh, I think the thing that most drives me the most is the open source community, uh, getting to help lots of different people from around the world, getting to know people like yourself and people, uh, I mean just tons of people that I've met and friends that I love. And if we can build all this tooling that makes people more productive and lets people build things that they didn't think were even possible just a few years ago um, and, and solve like these give them the tools to make them successful solving their problems. Uh, not, I, I, I'm a little bit less driven by like sort of big companies here in Silicon Valley and more driven around a lot of the people around the world who are building apps and solving problems that uh, haven't been possible to solve before. Um, so I'm really, I'm really into the open source side of things and yeah, that's what drives me. It seems like there's been a lot of talk about React Native, more so than anything lately. Like, everybody is just React Native, React Native, and there's this whole idea of we want to make one React, not React in React Native, which is... Yeah, there, there is a slight divide in the community in terms of the people that are on the native side and those that are on the web side. And that's in part because you're solving, you're solving a lot of the same problems, but the way you have to go about them is sometimes different. And if we can keep people together on that and we can share solutions to problems and not constantly be forking the community in places, uh, there's a lot of value to be had there. Um, React Native is very exciting because it's sort of democratizing, I feel like, uh, these native platforms uh, and making them more accessible to people like like we saw with the Create React Native 
app, longest name ever. Uh, people being able to build uh, iOS apps on non-Mac machines that they might not be able to afford uh, and being able to deploy it with different services and test it out. Giving people access to, uh, allowing people to build things uh, that previously you had to have all these extra resources and you had to you know, have a Mac, you had to have all this like developer licensing and things. Um, and, and, and opening that up is really important, I think. And it's, it's cool that we can do that as a community, sort of sidestep uh, the big corporations that rule us. <laughs> Where can we find you on the internet? Uh, I am at the James Kyle on pretty much everything, Twitter, GitHub, Medium everything so <laughs> hey there are you into reactive programming using javascript do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app then join this dot instructor ben lash to learn all of the ins and outs of rxjs in his hands-on workshop available online and in person go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today